Atheist Nomads, episode 91, My Book of Mormon, with David Michael. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. As a concerned parent of the uh, free thought community, I want to advise uh, Atheist Nomad listeners that this is an adult show. There will be things discussed, talked about, topics that may be inappropriate for children under the age of 25, 26, 27, 40. (laughs) We are the Atheist Nomads bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 91. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. With a bullet, man. How you doing? And joining us today is David Michael from the My Book of Mormon podcast. Hello, gentlemen. Damn, that's a sexy voice you got there. I thought well, mine was good, but <laughs> it is—it is pretty good. We might—we might be seducing each other tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you never so, know. Hey, all right. So, David, let's start off with you with your podcast. Uh, sure. Why the hell would you want to subject yourself to the Book of Mormon? Well, I was a dare, really. Mormon Church <laughs> dared me. Yeah, so I went to see the musical when it was here in Chicago, and uh, if you haven't, if you ever get the opportunity, fucking hilarious. I mean that I, I've actually only ever been to one musical in my life in my entire life because it just what sounds appealing about going to a musical. Not but it was made by the South Park guys, so I'm like, gotta be good. It was awesome. But in the uh, what do they call it? The little thing they give playbill, I think they call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm not I'm not an experienced musical goer, so uh, yeah, the playbill. Uh, inside it, there was a full page ad from the LDS church and it said something along the lines of, you've seen the play now learn the truth and read the book. And I was like, you know what? I will. <laughs> we'll see what your book has to say. So yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I decided I just wanted to read it just cause I was curious and I, I was a bit inspired by, uh, Thomas Smith from Thomas in the Bible. I thought, you know, that was a pretty good idea. Pretty fun what he's doing. And I was like, you know, maybe we'll try this out. So, yeah, I picked up the Book of Mormon, put a microphone on, and started reading it. And I'll tell you, I had no idea how awesome it was going to be. Because episode one was just like right out of the gate that insanity begins. Like, they don't they don't warm you up first. It just starts out with craziness. So, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun just from the beginning. So, I don't regret it for a second. It's been, uh, if you haven't read the book of mormon you should you should try it's entertaining it's batshit crazy but it's entertaining yeah <laughs> so that's kind of what it was it was just uh i don't know it started as a hobby really right like something fun to do and uh it's turned into quite a bit more we can get into that later but yeah it just I, that was it i just thought podcast and 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 also as it's been pointed out people have told me i have a bit of a radio voice and should do something with that and uh yeah i thought that maybe having a career that made money was probably smarter. So I did that instead. But then <laughs> I thought maybe, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not, not a lot of money in voice apparently. So, uh, so yeah, I just started the, this is a hobby and yeah, it's, it's become what it is. But yeah, I'm reading the book of Mormon almost done actually hmm, all damn. the way, uh, about, uh, according to the, uh, e-reader, I'm like 86% done. So yeah, but don't worry. There's more books after this. Did you guys know that? Oh, so you're going to move on to, Doctrines and Covenants? I had no idea. Like, the, the <laughs> amount I knew about Mormonism, I, I learned from a musical and a South Park episode. Like, I knew <laughs> nothing. Like, nothing, right? Which is actually probably why uh, the, the, the show has worked so well, because I was so ignorant, right? But, but yeah, uh, apparently there's the Pearl of Great Price, which I've been told I should really be looking forward to. Don't know why, but people are telling me I'm going to love it. Apparently, it's just like takes racism to a new level from mm. what I've been told. But anyway, you know, I, I try. I don't read ahead. I don't want spoilers. And then there's this Doctrines and Covenants. So, yeah, all that stuff. Got to read it all. Whatever dumb book they've got, I'm going to read it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like uh, I can relate on the, the not knowing much about, about Mormons. Uh, until I moved to uh, Boise, I. Well, that'll, I that'll fill you in pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, granted, there's. 
the area here is probably 30% Mormon, but that's enough. Uh, there's enough in the Treasure Valley. They're having to build a second temple. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Well, you know, this one temple never do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to have one in Meridian, 10 miles away. Sure. But the uh, the Book of Mormon musical is coming to town here in about a month, and they sold out on tickets within, I think it was a half hour. It is so funny. It really is. If you just uh, just find a way, just murder <laughs> someone and take their tickets, it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when that temple opens up, though, um, they have a, a day when non-Mormons can get in there. You should check it out. I, I got a tour of the, the Boise Temple when they, they did a remodel. Huh? And oh. so, yeah, with the remodel, they, you know, they, they of course, have to desecrate the temple because they're going to allow, <laughs> you know, heathen construction workers to come in. What does that mean? Like rub shit on the wall? Like how do you desecrate it? Well, it's it's no longer sacred. Uh, outsiders no. can come in. So, so, so the desecration is just like in there. just allowing an outsider in is yeah. just that's yeah. the desecration. It's filthy now. Yep. And so so then uh, they had to for any temple services they all had to go to Idaho Falls and uh, yeah. yeah that's a three and a half four hour drive and huge inconvenience nice. for all the the Boise Mormons and then right before they reopen it they. Uh, have a, a big open house for a couple days and you can go in and get tours and have to watch creepy videos from uh, Thomas Monson and the like. Do they make you take your shoes off? I heard that. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, we, we have to boots, put shoes, booties? take shoes off. They put booties on us. Booties. Okay. Wow. And it was really creepy having like 16 to 20 year old girls putting booties on us. Yeah. I mean, the, the 16 is a bit weird. 20 I'm good with. No, yeah, some of work. them could have been really young, though. It was it was uh, a bit disturbing, and it it just really showed the the sexism they've got. You know, the men were were ushering people around. The women were just you know putting booties on people's dirty shoes. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That that's, that's yeah. There was just uh, Kate Kelly. Do you know about her? She was a woman that was a mormon and she started this movement basically saying that i've read through all of our scripture and i can't find anywhere where it says that women can't be uh bishops which is their equivalent of like priest right yeah and uh, so she just brought it up like and so she started this movement called ordain women was the name of it wow and they excommunicated that bitch just kicked her the fuck out just get out just As gone one would yeah yeah they didn't they don't, power they, away? they don't mess around with that stuff <laughs> Well, it, but it's funny. It'll catch up, though. So there, the Mormon church, well, from, from the history I've learned, they're a good 20, 30 years behind, but they get there. Like, eventually, they realize we got to make a change. So they, uh, like, you couldn't be black and be a Mormon for a long time. And they finally yeah. were like, all right, fine. We'll let darkies in, but, you know, just, they can't be bishops. Don't be absurd. And then <laughs> that lasted until I, in the 70s. And then they're like, all right, fine. God just gave us another message. Blacks can be bishops too. Sorry, our bad. And uh, so it's like they come around on this stuff. Polygamy was the same way, right? Although that one from the history I've read had more to do with uh, the federal government saying they were going to remove their statehood if they didn't stop just all marrying tons of women. And they were like, turns out God just talked to us last night and uh, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> well, they just kept that shit going on in private for quite a while and then they split off and then you got the FLDS. I'm sure you were, but I think they, uh, I think they just like figured out the right formula for, for a successful cult. Right. So it's, it's the, the first thing they did smart was as soon as they could, they just like went where no one was right. They moved their asses to Utah where no one could touch them. Genius plan. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just the way to do it. Isolate. But then they have this, this, this concept that it's a living church. That's what they call it. They're very proud of this, by the way, that, uh, at any time, God can come down and talk to their prophet and say, changing the rules and, and they can fix anything. So no matter how stupid their doctrine is, it can be changed and everyone's excited about it. Oh, a new revelation from God. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So yeah, they they can actually, well, what shocks me is that they have the ability to do that and it still takes them forever to get with the times. Like, yeah, you know, we've kind of. We're, we're past women's rights. Like, that's a thing we do now. They're equal. Do you not know that? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think yeah. they'll come around. And uh, it's actually just so disappointing that they could at any moment. Your little Monson guy could just stand up and be like, God talked to me last night. Women are cool again. Woohoo! They don't just have to put <laughs> booties on feet. 
They're people too. <laughs> and yeah, they still don't do it. So that's disappointing. Well, but they can have yeah. revelation with their board anytime. Yeah. You think they'd have more of them? Yeah. Well, when you look at the different uh, churches that came up in around that same time period, uh, you know, Adventist, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, a handful of others, uh, those 19th century churches, a lot of them had very similar ideas. Like the, the Adventists had a, a doctrine for quite a while of present truth where God was progressively revealing things to them. Of mm. course, that all stopped when the, the prophet died. They weren't smart enough to uh, immediately have a new one. Well, but even if you look at the Doctrines and Covenants, which I, I did actually record a pilot episode of the introduction to the Doctrines and Covenants. So I've, uh, I, I won't give anyone spoilers, but <laughs> I, I have a new idea for how to do that because I thought just reading it by myself would be horrifying. Just how do you make it entertaining? It's a bunch of bullet points about nonsense. So anyway, I'm not going to tell you any more about it. Don't even ask. But as I read it, it did turn out that like 95% of these doctrines and covenants that came down from God over the course of the entire Latter-day Saint history were given to Joseph Smith. Like everything after that, it was just like onesies, twosies here and there, 30, 40 years would go by. And then there'd be a relation that would be like, blacks are okay, woohoo, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it it's definitely uh, most of it was very you know, cult of personality around Joseph Smith, mm-hmm. but, but mm-hmm. they did at least have a mechanism for saying, well, technically God is still talking to us, but you know, nobody was quite as convincing as this other guy was. So, yeah. Yeah, man, I would, I wouldn't you love to just take a stab at starting a cult? Like, I really think I could do it. I, <laughs> I, I just, I wish I just had, like, could just like get rid of my morality for just a, a little while, just to see if I could pull it off. Cause I am convinced that uh, I could probably just make up some bullshit and get a bunch of people to move to Bats- Botswana with me and give me all their money. Like it just people are just so gullible if you just say the right things in the right way. I it's don't amazing. have the charisma to do it. I think I could pull it off. I mean, I I'm not. I, saying, I think I could do it. They that end up killing me after like you know two three years, but I think I could do it. No, you just have to get them to kill themselves first. Don't be silly. Come on, ah, uh, uh, shit. Yeah, then that way you could start I, another group. Yeah. Uh. Or just hey guys, tell them, I got you some Kool Aid. Yeah, <laughs> sure. You know the the Jesus spaceship is landing in Tanzania. Everyone fly there. I'll be there next week. I swear. Right. <laughs> but give me all your money first, so you can't fly back. Yeah. Done. Golden. It's. I just. It's. It's a. It just. So I. I actually can sympathize with people that are raised in Mormon communities. Are surrounded by it. Their whole life is this. They're raised with it. They're indoctrinated with it. It's all they know. Right. I can, I can, it's like, a, that makes sense. You could teach anyone anything. If that's all they know, that's what they're going to know. Sure. But the people that were like adults and heard this and bought, it, that's what shocks me. Like, I am actually way more interested in the early church history. Like, how did people get so wrapped up in this? It's such obvious bullshit. Like, it's not, it, it, just read what it says. Like, I don't even need to read the history of it. Just read what it says. It's such nonsense. It's shocking. That's something I've always wondered about all adults, really. The converts are the weird ones. I mean, Mm. the ones that are born with it, okay, sure. But the ones that are, like, convert to it, they get weird and really deep into it. Well, the Mormons, they they push the family angle, and they have their welfare programs, and their big big push is, you know, that that you'll feel the spirit moving. Mm. If you want to feel the spirit moving... Uh, almost anybody can. Sure. And uh, you don't feel the spirit? Why don't you fast for a few days? Yeah. See if that helps. Yeah, that'll help. Give you a little <laughs> hallucination. Yeah, and I had a, a, a boss that I would actually have long uh, political and religious discussions with, and he was he was Mormon, uh, about the same age as me. And uh, what was interesting with him is you could tell talking to him that he knew it was all bullshit, <laughs> but he had managed to master the cognitive dissonance where mm. not just knowing it's bullshit, but pretending to believe something else, literally holding conflicting views at the same time and being able to effectively uh, convey them very That's much in a, a non overlapping magisterium way that there's there's fact and then there's truth yeah that is what's shocking about 
so many religious people when you talk to them and really sit down and say, like, explain to me what you believe. Because this is actually I, I I'm, I'm a weird person that I'm fascinated by this. Right. And I think it's probably because I was raised in a very evangelical Christian family. My dad was a pastor. I spent my teenage years on the mission field because my parents said Jesus told them we were moving to another country. Just I could get into that, but it's crazy Christian upbringing. But I never, ever bought it ever. You know, I it was just I was born a skeptic, you know, and so all throughout my life going to Christian school and going to church, it was I was always like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Can you explain that? And, and you know, all of the adults in my life just kind of looked at it as, I don't know, misbehaving, right? Like, you're not supposed to question this. It's God. And I'm like, but it sounds weird. Just like <laughs> Santa Claus sounds weird, you know, <laughs> like. How does a fat dude fit in chimneys and how does he get to every house every night? It's just like questions you would ask if you think about it, right? <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so, yeah, i am always been fascinated by people of, of faith. I, I just I, – I get fascinated by anyone that's really believes. Like, uh, so, I, I've, I've had – just hours and hours of conversation with my father because he's just devout and we talk and I just, I legitimately want to know why, he be, what he believes and why he believes it. And I do this often and I find that the more you just listen and, and just ask questions because they'll try to turn the table. Why don't you believe this? It's like, no, no, that's, that's the wrong question. I want to know why you do. Right. <laughs> Cause you can all day long. You can, I could ask questions about why don't you believe in pick, right? Santa, Bigfoot, who cares? It's like, it's, that's, that's the wrong conversation. It's more interesting to know why you do believe. And, and, and I'm legitimately interested. I'm not trying to deconvert anyone. I'm just trying to understand because I've never understood faith. It's never, I just don't get it. And I never have. So I, I think that, um, I don't know that quite, but, but it's such a part of most of humanity, right? Mm -hmm. Most people have this concept of faith and they just believe in this thing that they can't prove and they don't care that they can't prove it. They're just good with that. Mm, it's all right. It's just, it just gives me comfort. And so, yeah, I, um, uh, yeah, I actually had some Mormon missionaries come to my door and I got, ex I was so excited. I was like, go, oh, <laughs> come in. Yes. Nice. And what was funny is it was actually a, a listener to the show that set me up. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> yeah, they totally did. And so they were like, are you David Michael? And I was like, yes. And they said, oh, we, you know, we saw that you went to our website and, and asked us to come visit. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to tell you this. One of my friends is fucking with you. Sorry. And then they were like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, I didn't ask you to come. And they said, uh, and the one kid was just, and, and by the way, I don't know if you've ever met Mormon missionaries. They're children. Mm -hmm, they are. Yeah kids <laughs> right and they're they have his little name tag you say like elder so-and-so it's hilarious but anyway and um the one was just he was just so he was like well since we're here do you have any questions for us and i said oh i have a million questions <laughs> 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 and, and so i invite we talked forever and you know eventually it came out because they were like okay well, what kind of questions do you have and i was like so i'm reading your book I'm like what, what do you mean i was like the book of mormon like what, you're reading it i was like yeah yeah, totally reading it. And and they were just like, th that shocked them. Like, like wait, nobody just, reads that. <laughs> right, nobody don't read that. that. <laughs> and so I started asking them all this stuff. And it was funny because like, uh, as we were talking, they were saying things like, oh, what did you think of Captain Moroni? And I was like, ooh, ooh he was, I didn't like him. What are you talking about? He was such a great hero and such a great just person. And I was like, dude, that guy was I, I, he was kind of the most evil character in the book. And this is like one of their heroes. Right. <laughs> and, and I started, started sort of describing why I was like, well, remember when like those thousands of people wanted a different political system and they're like, Oh, the King men. I was like, yeah, the people that wanted a King instead of those shitty judges that they had, I was like, yeah, what did he do? He killed them all. He just executed thousands of his own people. Great guy. And like, I'm saying all this and they're going like looking at each other. Like, did that happen? Did that happen? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it that happened. <laughs> And it's, it's funny because it's like, and I, I even tell them like, listen, I'm not picking on you because most people think like David in the Bible was this great guy, right? Oh, he killed Goliath. What a great guy. It's like, well, yeah, go back and read the whole story. He was horrible, like terrible human being, you know, killed a man so he could fuck his wife. Like what the fuck? Who does that? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just one example. Killed his own son. I mean, he's just not a good guy. 
But yeah, so whenever, so it's, a, it's, it's shocking to me how people can be like actually wrap their life around an idea or a concept and know so little about it. Like I, how is it that I know more about what you should believe than you do? Right. And that, and yeah, I don't know. I'm babbling now. We well, should that, have a- that sounds exactly like my Southern Baptist bring, upbringing, you know, that the only reading you do is from the passage that the pastor gives you that Sunday or that Wednesday or that Friday. No, actually I just saw somebody, they posted uh, on Facebook and they said it was, uh, what was her name? Sanger was her last name. The woman that started Planned Parenthood, like basically started birth control in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth Sanger, is that her name? Uh, right. Someone's, someone's going to write in and tell me that's wrong. It's something Sanger. That's her last name. But anyway, someone posted this quote that said something like, you know, a, a family with no money that has too many kids should murder their, or, you know, get rid of their infant or something like that. It was just something horrible, right? And I was like, man, that sounds fucked up. Like, why would she say that? And so I actually Googled it. Just Google. Imagine that. That's something we all have now on our phones. And it turns out it was a it was a verse from Job. Like, it's in the <laughs> Bible. And she was actually re- quoting the Bible to say, like, how can you be demonizing me when your book says something worse, right? <laughs> uh, and all she was trying to do was start birth control, right? Yeah. And so, you know, this guy was like, look at this horrible person, Planned Parenthood, bad. And I'm like, yeah, that's from your book, dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. Faith is weird. I, I respect people more that at least know their own topic, right? It's like, that's actually why my dad and I have good conversations because he, he, he does know it all. He's read it plenty. He's a, you know, he is a pastor. That's his, that's his occupation. And, and so we can talk long into the night. And it's funny. We always hit this point though, where I, and this is the point where I know I won, by the way, and feel a little bit, a <laughs> little bit of pride because he'll always say like, well, you can't reach, you can't reach God through logic. And I'm like, yeah, I won that one. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> It's like, you got to reach him through faith. I'm like, ah, okay. So you're conceding. Thank you. Does he ever use the one where that's just what I believe? Well, kind of. It's more like uh, he has this. He he always says that my problem is that I'm uh, I'm not like searching. Right. So if you honestly. Yeah. If you honestly, you know, look for God, he will he will find you or some such nonsense. Uh, and and I I actually go back to the you know the concept of parenting right so people often say that God the Father right God is our heavenly Father right I said okay let's use that analogy what kind of parent would say I've lost my child I know where they are but unless they yell really loud for me I'm just gonna fucking ignore them like what well, that's if even if you're right what a shit parent <laughs> right <laughs> it's like it's terrible. Why would I have to go find them? Come find me. Like if I lost my kid, I would stop at nothing to find them and get them back. Right. Yeah. Especially if the alternative is they burn for eternity. Like what the fuck? Who would, what kind of a being is this? See, I, I don't think it's possible to wrap uh, the, the, the worldview of, of any religion, especially one that believes in eternal damnation. Any of those world, you just can't come around and say loving God. It just doesn't work. You know, I, I've never been able to find anyone that could make it work. And it's this whole concept of like, well, no, it's not God's fault. It's our fault. It's like, well, he made us. So what the fuck? Like it, God actually made a defective product mm-hmm. and he did. I'll give him credit. He attempted a recall. He really did. But Noah survived. So that didn't work. So now he's stuck with these humans, even though he tried killing them all. This one family survived. They kept going. Now he's stuck with them. And, uh, yeah. But but just it just I I don't get it. Why if you're going I, like I am convinced that if I was God and I was going to create a universe and I was going to pick this one little planet and make my little species, I would have done a much better job. Like any one of us would have. Then to, to have it like would it cross your mind that okay let's make sure there's an option for them to suffer eternally. How do we do that? Like why would you do that? That's terrible. <laughs> So anyway, I, I it just, it's just crazy to me. I don't get it. I just, I've never gotten it. No. And I've, I've really tried to get it. Like that's the difference. I have really sit down with people and listen and I'm just like, yeah, that still doesn't add up. This doesn't at all. So I want to take it back a little bit here. Yeah. We've, we've gone, you could probably like 
delete the last 20 minutes and we could just start a new show. I don't sure, even know how we're on this track. <laughs> we love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. You're a PK. Mm. Are you familiar with that? You better be. Yeah, and MK. Come on now. Give me all the acronyms I am <laughs> due, sir. Yeah, yeah. A preacher's kid. Wow. True. So did you rebel when you're growing up or were you like pretty good about it? No, I mean, I definitely had the, when, when I went, so I, uh, when I say missionary kid, we, my dad, all throughout the time I was growing up used to every, I don't know, year, maybe every other year, he would just, uh, load up suitcases full of Bibles and smuggle them into the Soviet union to all the underground churches. That was his thing, right? Wow. Wow. Church would sponsor him. And it was always like, say goodbye to daddy. Let's pray real hard that he doesn't wind up in Siberia. I kind of it was fucked up. But anyway, Danny always came back. It was one time he came back. I was 13 and life was great for me. Right. I mean, I had, oh, I was like president of my junior high student council, had my little girlfriend. And I held her hands in lunch. You know how it is. And uh-huh. uh, life was perfect. It's 13 year old. This is wonderful. And they came, he came back and he's just like, oh, daddy didn't go to Siberia. Wonderful. Praise Jesus. And then, uh, yeah, then he said, well, Jesus talked to me while I was there, and he said, we have to move there. I'm like, uh, what's this now? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> and so he wasn't fucking around. And my mom's just like, oh, praise Jesus. It's wonderful. And I'm like, my parents have lost their minds. So this happened. Uh, like, should I call the police? I'm not sure. Turns out as a 13-year-old, you don't really have a lot of say yeah. if your parents aren't. <laughs> yeah, you're just fucked. And so, yeah, I actually, I probably, if I dug up my old passport, I have a stamp in there from the Soviet Union because we fucking moved there. Four months later, by the way. Wow. Four Holy months shit. after he landed, we were landing in the, uh, at the time, was the Latvian Soviet Socialist Republic. Now, what was cool is this wow. was January 91. So, I actually lived there and got to see communism fall. And mm. like a country be born and figure that out. So it was actually a really cool time to be in Eastern Europe. Yeah. Wow. In hindsight. And so my parents look back and they, they look and like, yeah, see, you wouldn't have had that great experience. Not for Jesus. I'm like, no, <laughs> I got lucky because my, I, I didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were in a very unstable place during active rebellions. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, <laughs> that, it was on the state department. Do not travel list. We went anyway because Jesus will protect us. So, you know, that's all the evidence they need. We lived. So there you go, Jesus. But, uh, so yeah, I was, uh, that, that's how deep into it. My family is, and pretty much my whole family is I'm, I'm still the outsider. So, so when you asked, did I rebel? I never really swallowed the Kool-Aid ever. Like I, I always figured out like when I was young, we, we, it was one of those churches where like, it was the land and hams speaking in tongues kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like the women wore like, you know, 18th century clothes kind of Pentecostal, but it was definitely the speaking in tongues type. Like my dad plays the drums. So during worship, he's like slamming away on drums and breaking a sweat. And then he just wipes the sweat off his brow and gets up to the pulpit and preaches like that, that kind of church. Oh, okay. So that, that actually doesn't sound that bad. It was exciting. It was fun. I mean, yeah. there's like elect when they, when you have drums and electric guitars during worship, it beats the shit out of hymns. I'll give them that. But oh, yeah. uh, so I learned early on that as long as you have a job, you're kind of safe, right? So I was, man, I was probably eight or nine, and and I was the guy that ran the projector, right? Nice. The transparency. Remember those transparent mm, projectors? Yeah. yeah. So every time the prayer, you know, the next praise would come up or worship or whatever, I'd pull out the number and I'd slide it in there and it was my job to put it up on the wall and then I was safe. So now I wasn't expected to stand up and clap and dance and whatever nonsense was going on because I had a job. It's transparency. <laughs> very important. I'm going to make sure it's dealt with. So I always find it ways to avoid the awkwardness. So, I mean, in those little ways I rebelled and I don't think people knew I was rebelling. I don't even think I knew I was rebelling. I was just trying to find ways to not just do things that seemed fucking nuts. Right. Even I remember 
when uh, I was like, finally, it reached the point where I just had to speak in tongues because everyone was doing it. I was old enough. It was expected. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you get you, know, you got yourself filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm like, oh, fuck that means. So I just like paid attention to like what people were saying because I was like, I got to say something. And it and and so I had this catchphrase that I came up with. And basically, I would say she came on a Honda really fast. Right. I've heard I've heard the same thing ish. Like uh, shit about a Honda. No, yeah, she came on a Honda. It, there's something about Honda. It comes up yeah. a lot. Speaking of tongues, God likes his Hondas. So yeah, I just say she came on a Honda, and I'm like, I just feel the Holy Spirit. I'm like, yeah, that's right. The Holy Spirit is all <laughs> in my business. Yeah. So that kind of stuff. But the, but definitely when when I got dragged out of my what I thought was a perfect life for a 13 year old and dropped in the Soviet Union and told to wait in line for bread for an hour and just what the fuck is my life doing? Then uh, that's when I really kind of just told my parents you guys have lost your minds and i don't want any part of you so yeah i embraced being there because i quickly learned that you know especially once they officially broke free from the soviet union anything western to them was awesome right and we were the only americans there like there weren't any others so yeah i was in a country whose drinking age was do you have money and can you reach the counter and uh <laughs> And Americans were awesome and everyone would hang out with you. So I actually had probably one of the best teenage years. I was just awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just out at all hours of the night, just living it up and uh, just, you know, man of the town. And uh, yeah, so then I would just come home at any hour of the night. And of course, they, they wouldn't be very happy with that. But I was just like, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, so, yeah, we definitely there was there was that. And then after, so I came when I was 17, I was, I, I homeschooled, which is such bullshit, but, uh, I mean, I couldn't go to school, school, didn't have one. So I like technically graduated high school when I was 16, even though I didn't really do anything. And then, um, yeah, I'm telling you, homeschool is such a joke. I don't know if you ever looked into it. You can do nothing and get a degree, but anyway, so I got one. <laughs> It it paid. It cost me later. I had to do several remedial math courses before I could legitimately start college. But um, so anyway, so I was seventeen, came back and joined the Air Force. Got to do something with my life. And nice. for man, for a good man, I want to say seven, eight years, we really didn't talk. Like maybe it was like once a year. So I was. It was still a time where there weren't really cell phones and long distance calls actually cost money and were a burden, right? Oh yeah. So we had this great excuse to not talk to my parents. They lived in the other side of the fucking world. Do you know what I mean? So every now and then we talked, but it was more just like, Hey, how are you? Oh, you're still alive. Cool. Okay. Keep doing that. And then, uh, and then it wasn't until uh, I want to say my little brother who was just, well, he had, he drank the Kool-Aid from birth and he, when he finally went to college and I remember he called me and he was like, I don't know what to do. My roommate is making out with a guy in my room. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> welcome to the rest of humanity. <laughs> That's a thing that happens. Sorry, bro. And so he, he was finally for the first time in his life, kind of out of his bubble, out of the Christian bubble. Right. And just started seeing the world for what it was. And, and like I said, just got thrust into it. Right. I mean, the fact that he just, the, the randomness of him getting a just openly gay roommate right out of the gate, freshman in college, I thought that was just fantastic. And so he just be, so he and I got to be more and more close as he started to just be more and more normal. And I don't know, through my relationship with them, I got to be kind of rekindled a relationship with my parents where it was more like, okay, you understand I'm never going to see eye to eye with you on your whatever you believe and vice versa. So that, let's just make that okay. And my dad and I are there. My mom and I aren't. I don't think we'll ever be, really. She always still sends me stuff like, oh, I'm praying for you. I'm like, good for you. Make you feel better. It's fantastic. But anyway, sorry. I don't know how we've gotten down this depressing topic. But yes, so I was raised a uh, super preacher kid turned missionary kid turn fuck you all turn all right i'll talk to you no i'll be honest uh, i've heard much worse <laughs> so you weren't that bad really <laughs> all right so so your, your show what's the the general uh, feel of it for our, our listeners yeah, yeah so it, it started out 
is as just I was going to read the Book of Mormon and see if I could make it entertaining, right? And so the first I, I recorded like five episodes and then released. So I had like a backlog of five before I went like public with it. We should and have so, done that. You know, I don't know because the first, the earlier ones are are not nearly as fun because it, it became the show that it is today. Once people started listening and and writing in and calling in and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm, yeah. Because uh, I honestly thought that the show would be for for the for our community, right? So like atheists that thought that's just I'm curious about Mormons and see what they believe, and uh, so I was just. Mm, I'll just read their book and everyone will just see if we can make this entertaining. But it turns out like there's this enormous ex Mormon community that I didn't know existed. Right. I, I, I didn't, I don't know anything about Mormons who knew that there's like millions of ex Mormons and the show became a huge hit amongst that community. And, um, and they were all writing me in and people saying like, Oh my God, this is like therapy for me. And I'm like, what in the fuck are you wow. talking about? Just being a goofball. And, <laughs> Yeah, there's the more reason, Mormons than there are Mormons. Oh yeah, there's so many, and so and and a lot of them said that you know even they'd been out of it for years and they'd left it behind, but they still had this like feeling of guilt, like that somehow their faith wasn't strong enough, or they just there was something wrong with them that they couldn't believe because everybody else did, like that kind of a thing. But and I can I can appreciate that, like if you're just indoctrinated in it and have to walk away it's it's a tough thing right yeah and you know it's kind of that it was my fault mentality and so a lot of them or most of them would write in and say just listening to you read it that you know someone that wasn't indoctrinated with it it's like oh my god that book is so stupid (laughs) (laughs) nice (laughs) like just hearing you read it is just like i just love it because it's like all these things that i like they all remember being in sunday school and reading these same passages and like isn't it wonderful because and i would read it and be like well that's crazy you know (laughs) and uh because because i don't know any better right just reading it as it stands on its own merit it's it does not stand up very well just to, i mean you could pick anything you could pick the ridiculousness of the concept right you could have massive civilizations existing in north america with no archaeological evidence or the fact that that native americans were descendants from israel but yet their dna isn't it weird uh we just hit a point i'm not making this up this was immediately after the tower of babel so if you remember your biblical mm-hmm. timeline this is fucking early this is like there was Garden of Eden and Cain and Abel and then Noah and then Babel, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is that early in the, and I mean, we're talking like Genesis four or something. It's early. Yeah. Uh, 12. So I don't know. Even, 11. If, 11. even if you're a uh, 11, is that yeah. really? Oh. Yeah. 12 is uh, Abraham. Impressive, sir. Very good. So 11 it is. I will grant you that because you said it with authority. Whether you're <laughs> right or not, I'm giving it to you. Hey, I've got a BA and BS. <laughs> But anyway, so one of the uh, Babel families, they were like, oh, come on, God, don't fuck with our language. He's like, all right, you guys are all right. Keep your language. And he's like, but tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this choice land. And, and so then they went and he instructed them how to build these boats so they could get to America. And they built, I'm not making this up, fucking submarines. God nice. taught them how to make submarines. And they loaded up their whole families and livestock. And they're like, well, here's the thing, God. We're going to suffocate. Like they had to tell God that they would suffocate in these things. And God's like, fine, drill a hole in the top, put a cork in it and just, just, you know, unplug it. If water comes in, plug, plug the hole. But if there's, if the water didn't come in, then then you can get some air. And it's like the ridiculousness of that is just, I can't even know where to begin. Wow. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) And so I was just like, I was laughing at how stupid this story was until they said, after 344 days, they reached the new world. I was like, wait, what? 300 and f- that's a year in a submarine <laughs> with livestock. A, a, how many supplies would you have to have? B, how much shit and piss is floating around in there? Like you can't, it's not like you can just open it up and they had an air hole. That was the only thing they had. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's insane. Like just to read that stuff and, and try and think like, how do people believe this? It's like, well, because they put spins on it. And I asked the, the missionaries that came to my house, I asked them about that. Like, what about these fucking submarines? Right. And the woman was like, well, I think it was more like a, 
a boat that could that could withstand strong waves. I'm like, yeah, that's not what it says, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> It says it was airtight and it was living with the whales. I don't know how you say that anything different. And so, yeah, people try to uh, put their when it's so ridiculous, but they believe it. Then it's the it must be true. How do we make it make sense Mm -hmm. instead of saying, (laughs) does this make sense? Right. And yeah, I don't know. Joseph Smith must have just been smoking something when he wrote the book of ether because it's some crazy shit in that one. It's actually called the book of ether. Maybe he was just on ether. Must have been. He named it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you're so, according to your e-reader, you're 86 percent through. Have have there been any talking frogs yet? No. Did, no. No. I heard about the frogs when I was on um, when I was with David Smalley. So I went down. I went. I was with him for the 24 uh, hour broadcastathon that he did for Foundation yeah. Beyond Belief. Yeah. And so uh, I was a part of that. And and he asked me about the frog thing. And I don't know what he's talking about. And, uh, yeah, apparently it's not in the Book of Mormon. I, I'm not sure if it's coming up in the Pearl of Great Price or Doctrine and the Covenants or, or it just might be – a lot of this stuff is just like, like uh, I don't know, historical records of stuff that he said. You know what like, I mean? Because the guy was a, a cult. There's another David you need to talk to, uh, David Fitzgerald. Amazing no, I guy. Did, I talked to him that night, actually. Did you? It was the same story. Nice. because uh, Because David Smalley – was handing yeah. me this book and he's like, you should read this. And I was yeah. like, no, nah, dude, I'm, I, what people love about my show is that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> I can't get more educated. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, the get book, that away from me. And the what book was really doesn't was, talk about the book of Mormon. It talks about the history of, of, uh, Smith and uh, the early church, but doesn't really go into the book itself really. Right. But and it the does tell some of the crazy shit that I, didn't make it. Yeah, the, the, the audio book is narrated by David Smalley. There's a David circle jerk going on in this conversation. <laughs> because, yeah, so, yeah, D- David Fitzgerald was one of the hours for the broadcast-a-thon. Yeah. And so, yeah, I actually got a chance to say hi to him. And, and we talked a little bit about it. But, yeah, uh, it, David did play that scene. David Smalley. It's got so many fucking Davids. <laughs> he played, like, that clip about the frog man or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, uh and it was funny because he had saved every attempt. Like he had tried like four or five times to say it without laughing and he couldn't do it. Like he was <laughs> trying to read this audio book in his ferry. And then Joseph, you know, went on his horse and traveled <laughs> a few more steps in the frog man. And he's like, Oh my God, I can't do it. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was something. So I am excited. There's it. That's the toughest thing about doing this show is that I'm legitimately interested in the topic, but people absolutely love the fact that I don't know what's coming. And they have, I mean, listeners have stayed true to this. Like after an, I'll release an episode and people get all excited and they're like, Oh, awesome. Now that you've, now that you've read that, we can tell you this, you know, <laughs> and they'll come in. But someone sent me like uh, a bunch of photos of like uh, children's videos from the book of Mormon. Right. And yeah. some of, some of the things I hadn't read yet. And so they black things out. <laughs> and so I didn't see the names and stuff. I just saw these pictures and I was like, ah, okay. But yeah, it's, it's the, the listeners have been very keen on that. And a few times people have said like left uh, comments on the website or something that might be a hint of a spoiler and everyone just gets angry. People will comment <laughs> like, no spoilers. What are you doing? Don't tell them. Wow. Yeah. Nobody's yeah, tried to troll and spoiler the shit out of anything. Really? That's no, the trolls are no, the trolls are they don't get it. So the trolls are more like, you know, you'll see when you reach judgment day and it's like, yeah, 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 whatever, go away. Yeah. You know, <laughs> actually there is my let me see if I can pull it up while we're talking. Uh, my favorite iTunes review was a troll and it is hilarious. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to find it. This is going to take a minute cuz iTunes takes forever to load. So, talk about something else while we're waiting cuz this could take some time. What are you guys drinking? I am drinking from the local sound brewery up in Paulsville, Washington. It is my favorite Belgian. It is called uh, Monk's Indiscretion. It is a Belgian triple that is about 10% and scarily drinkable and so fucking yum. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I'm fairly certain you now have money coming to you for royalties because that was a fantastic ad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god yeah send uh, that audio clip to them yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes and and get them to at least sponsor us with free beer oh god yeah mm. 
That seems fair. So yeah. I, I can I can say something glorious about your beer every episode because oh, of they, the. Uh, try it again. Let, let's see if you can do another round. <laughs> Endorse your beer, sir. Let's see what you got. <laughs> God damn it! Now I'm on the spot. Fuck it. No. Uh, <laughs> all right. I found the review. If that'll save you. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So the title of the review, it's a one star, only got the one. Uh-huh. And it's uh, it says, Mr. T's famous line got it right on again, which uh, I believe they're referring to, I pity the fool. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm the fool. And it says, uh, I bet you think you're the crap, don't you? <laughs> because oh, they can't no. swear. So they have to say the crap. Uh, <laughs> it says. Let's see. Did it get to the part in Ether where it talks about you and others like you? I might have. I don't. I don't know because I, 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 I usually don't understand the scriptural parts. Anyway, and what will come to pass due to mockery is this. I just I love this review. It's my favorite. <laughs> Bet you nice. think you're the crap. Don't. When I first, I, I remember I woke up in the morning and I saw it. And I was like, oh my god, someone gave me one star review and I was all bummed. And then I saw. Bet you think you're the crap, don't you? And I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah so that's what the trolls do there's this one woman that loves to go to the facebook page and just like why is there anyone listening to this you know blasphemous blah, and it's just like and I, and I just love seeing everyone jump on her and just like oh hey you bitch and I was like, fantastic I love you guys <laughs> so yeah the uh listeners of the show who are, who are called mimos by the way mm-hmm. i can explain why but yeah, so all the mimos definitely have my back every time somebody tries to troll. It's pretty fun, and we and we laugh about it. So the one star views are pretty. They're pretty funny. Nice. Here's another one. Although David might not believe what he is reading, millions of people do. This is another one star view. I find no reason why he would belittle and mock something that has brought so many people happiness and joy. Something that testifies and brings reader closer to the Savior, Jesus Christ. Something that invites people to be better in their lives. If you really want to know what the Book of Mormon is really about, all caps, that this is not the place to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Love those. <laughs> it's fantastic. If you like the show, consider giving us some financial support. We make it easy to make one-time donations or to support us on a per-episode, monthly, or annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com using the links on the right-hand side of the page. One dollar an episode is all we ask. And, and iTunes has been, um, it's been quite a blessing. So the, the show has a drinking game, and it was born uh, out of an iTunes review. Oh, no. So someone <laughs> dropped a five-star review and said, I've got a great idea for a drinking game. Every time David says, it came to pass, or yay, we take a drink. That's the review. That's all it says. And I thought, hey, That's that sounds dangerous. fun. So this was like episode, it was early, like nine, right? And I thought, that'll be fun. And so I did it for an episode. So every time, and it, trust me, there's a lot. There's tons of, it came to pass and yay. Y-E-A, <laughs> by the way, if you're wondering what yay is. Yeah. So it's more like, um, and Jesus said, yay, you must do this. Yay. It's just these yays are in there all the time. So, anyway, so I did it for an episode, and I thought it was kind of annoying because I was constantly saying drink. It was like it came to pass drink, and I was like, eh, it's kind of annoying. So I just did it for the one, just as a joke. And then, uh, and so the next episode, I'd forgotten about it. And I don't think I've ever gotten so many emails as that episode where everyone said, why did you stop the drinking game? That was fucking awesome. Do that again. <laughs> and so the next one, so I came back in like episode 11. And I, and I actually said, all right, listen, seriously, I think this is annoying, but you guys seem to love it. So I guess we're, this is a thing. And I said, if even one person, I'm not joking, one person write me and tell me to stop and I won't do it anymore. <laughs> and I was like, but I'm going to do it this episode. You guys tell me. And so, uh, yeah, just did it. And everyone was like, yes, do that more. So now it's just a thing. The show has a drinking game. And so I've embraced it because that's what the people want. And, uh, yeah, it's every episode. If you go to the show notes, I actually do the math and figure out how many beers it'll take to get through the episode. The last one was nearly 10, nine and a half beers <laughs> in an hour. Yeah. Some wow. of them will fuck you up. Now, some of them are just like, you know, one and a half. You never know. Like you don't know, but I think the record was 17 fuck. and I actually did. I had to put a legal disclaimer on that one. I was like, do <laughs> not play along to the drinking game. You will not live. This will kill you. Do not do it. So I had to I had to put that. It, it's actually in the show notes. It says that. <laughs> <laughs> do not play along. 
Nobody yeah. reads the show notes, though. Yeah, I know. That's true. But you know what? If someone dies, I'll be like, ah, show notes, bitch. Yeah. Can't yeah. Me. <laughs> and you know a disclaimer. <laughs> I consulted my lawyer, and they were, I was told that sufficed. <laughs> but yeah, it's become so much fun. And now, like, I don't even know if I'm capable of reading something that says, and it came to pass without yelling drink. And so many people have written in that, that because a lot of people are, you know, uh, still a part of the community, right? They know it's bullshit. They're, they're in their hearts. They're out, but they're not out. Right. And this is the equivalent of like knowing you're gay, but not being out. Right. Sure. So, and, and they, and they tell me like, Oh my God, it's killing me. I'm sitting there listening to my Bishop talk. And every time he says it came to pass, I just want to yell drink. You know? <laughs> 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 so it's fun. It's like, it's, it's kind of created its own little subculture, you know, the show itself. So, but the drinking game has become a huge part and I've played along. Like there's been nights where I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. I feel like drinking and playing. And so I will like literally play along as I'm reading. I'm like drink. And then I'll just glug, glug, glug. And I keep going. <laughs> and there's this one time I was obliterated. It, I think it was, uh, that one was like an eighter and I did it. Right. Nice. So I got through and, and by the way, the math I do and some people question my math, but I figure it's it's six drinks of beer. I mean, a good drink. We're talking drinking game drink, not a sip. Right. Someone yells drink. That's a drink. Okay. So I figure right, six so- drinks of beer. That's, that seems fair. Right. So I went through eight beers in an hour of recording. I was just like, Bleh. by the end, you could tell I was just wasted. <laughs> what happened was it, when you're doing this, you, no one can just have eight beers sitting next to him. And also, I don't know how many there's going to be because I don't read ahead. So I had, uh, I was constantly like, oh shit, I'm out of beer. Pause. And I go get more and I come back and come back. All right, let's keep reading. So in the last break, I was like, oh my God, I just got this email and it was from this, uh, this show called the Mormon stories podcast. Right. And this is a, it's a Mormon show. Right. It's, it's definitely not an atheist show. It's not quite like totally, it, it's more of a, I, I guess you'd say liberal Mormon, but definitely Mormon. Right. If you've never okay. heard of it. Okay. It, it's actually a really big show. If you go to iTunes, religious other category, it's always in the top five. Like it's, it's a <laughs> fairly large show. And so they were like, Hey, cause we'd been, they'd asked me before, would you be interested in coming on? And I was like, sure. Why not? And, and they were like, Hey, could you come on tonight? We actually have an opening in like an hour. And I'm like, Oh fuck, I'm wasted. You know, <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. And so, and, and I actually on the show, I was so drunk. I just told everyone, I was like, Oh my God, you guys aren't going to believe this. I'm, I have to go like record with Mormon stories. This will be fun. <laughs> and everyone's writing in like, you're kidding me. You did that drunk. And, um, so I recorded this episode with him. And I was all over the place. Like you couldn't even keep track of what I was talking about. I was jumping topics left and right. And, uh, and so I was like, yeah, whatever, it, it, uh, that is what it is. So about three days later, they write me back and they were like, so our producers really liked, you know, the, the, the spirit of what we were doing, but, but, you know, we really, we just didn't ask the right questions. And so like the, the, the hosts <laughs> of the show were being very apologetic, like, like we really just, you know, we, we should have been more directed and had more, you know, been more directional. And I was just like, Oh my God, you guys don't know. This is all my fault. And, uh, <laughs> so they, at, they like basically begged and pleaded. They're like, if it was possible, could we re-record? Is that something we could do maybe? And I was just like, Oh yes, let's do that. So we recorded it again where I was good and sober and that's the one they released. But then I asked them like, Hey, do you think it's cause I had the recording of the last one, you know, I recorded the whole Skype conversation. And so, uh, I released it for the patrons, right? You guys know <laughs> Patreon and all that stuff. Sure, sure. It was like, Hey, here, here's the uncut version. Have at it. And almost everyone that listened to it was just like, Oh my God, that was so much better. <laughs> I wish that was the real episode. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the drinking game can get you into trouble. Is all I'm saying. So you have to be careful when you play. So do you but always th- drink along? No, goodness, no. I wouldn't. No, no. I would have to go to AA meetings if I tried that. <laughs> it's it's a like you. It require you've got to be a drinker. Even though the show only comes out once a week, it's it's tough sometimes. Like I said, it almost it was like nine point six seven beers in, in an hour. 
that's crazy. Yeah. I did eight once, and I'm telling you, I could barely, I, it, it's rough. But you never know. Some shows have been one. Some have been less than one. But most of them, I'd say the average is about six. But still in an hour. So you're not fucking around. Yeah, I, I suppose. And give you a, a little bit of credit for that. You know, six is kind of my weak beer level, though. Just saying. Nah, I call, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. I would never play with anything other than like Miller Lite. Yeah, no. no this is not a craft beer drinking game. <laughs> yeah. You don't play drinking games with good beer. No. Period. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually up in the eight and a half to ten range. Mm-hmm. Which is probably where I am now, but I yeah. started like four. So that's different. Yeah. I have the greatest boss ever. Like we're best friends and he happens to be my boss. And so he's, he's like, Hey, my last meetings ends at three 30. You want to go drinking? I'm like, mm, yes. So I have to yeah. my boss. How can I say no? So yeah, we <laughs> started a bit early. So you're getting me at the, um, let's see. I'm not drunk, but I'm, I shouldn't be driving. That's where I am. Oh, okay. nicely buzzed. You're nicely buzzed. Well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what else do you want to know? I got the truth serum in me. It, it's kind of like rain. You know, in Washington State, we have tons of words for rain. We have tons of words for drunk down <laughs> here. Yeah. Nicely buzzed. Fit it perfectly. Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, that's one aspect of the show is the drinking game. Uh, what else has happened with the show? So, oh, MIMO, I mentioned that. So mm-hmm. it, what I learned is that you know, this, this whole Mormonism is, it's like this whole universe I didn't know existed. Right. It's like, and I've actually referred to it as, it's like, I feel like I'm an explorer that landed on an alien planet. And I just, I'm now learning about these people <laughs> that no one knew existed, you know, cause it's so, I, I didn't know how, like I knew Mormons were in Utah and this kind of thing, but I didn't know how like just completely in control they were. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've actually heard Idaho is even worse. Uh, I've heard, Eastern I've heard, Idaho. I've heard BYU Idaho is probably the most fucked up place. That's, in America. that's Rexburg Idaho. So Eastern Idaho really is like just Northern Utah. All right. Uh, it is very, very Mormon. There are dry counties over there. Uh, <sighs> Rexburg, where BYU Idaho is, is a, a damp county. You can have beer and wine. But the only <laughs> places county. that serve I've it. I've never heard of a damp county. Yeah. They. Uh, they Can we serve, be worse? Let's just start calling them moist counties. <laughs> moist counties. <laughs> so in in Rexburg, <laughs> the Applebee's serves beer, wine, and a few pre mixed cocktails, and then and most of the people that come in ask for wine in a regular juice glass. I'm telling you, it still works. You'd be like, hey, let's go to Applegate Applebee's and get moist. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, the, the, the moist bowling alley. Tonight. Yeah, I'm mean, totally moist. <laughs> the bowling alley uh, serves beer, but they had a bar there once, and it closed down pretty quick because they didn't have enough business. What did you call it? Damp. That works too. I'm gonna get so damped up tonight. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Let's go to the bowling alley and get damped, yo. But I, I, I went to to Rexburg on on a business trip, and <laughs> I, I pulled into town, and it was like I was driving into a foreign country. No, I, I've been to Jordan. I know what a truly foreign country feels like. That felt weirder. <laughs> they had uh, approved single women's housing and approved single men's housing. Are there you was, actually going on record to say that Jordan is has less religious zealotry than Eastern Idaho? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just for the record, yeah. making sure I heard that right. Got it. They, uh, it just, it, it feels more American than, than Eastern Idaho. Uh, you, or at least Rexburg, not all of Eastern Idaho. Uh, Idaho Falls isn't as bad, but the, uh, they have, have hot chocolate shops. Oh, not coffee shops, hot chocolate stops. That's kind of sweet. The best cup of coffee in town is at the McDonald's. Well, can't pass up a McCafe. <laughs> it was just so freaking weird and everybody was so polite and then you look up at night and the only thing you can see is the giant glowing temple that's on the highest point above town that's, that just kind of has that kind of uh stepford wife feel to it yeah but make it really creepy 
really, well, really creepy. Stuff for wives are pretty creepy. But, Double the yeah. creep. And right. You've got Rexburg. Yeah. It's, it's, no, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I, I think I'm going. I think I'm going to come to Utah. <laughs> A couple months. I got. I just got to see it. So I've actually been working with uh, John DeLynn. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's, hey, it doesn't matter. He's a guy. He uh, he was also one of the uh, people excommunicated along with this uh, ordained women movement. Oh, so sure. he got kicked out of the church. And they're still trying to figure him out because his like public statement says like that he's always going to consider himself a Mormon even though he's not in the church. And, and I'm on, and, but but he's he's so like he's one of those people that says, yeah, Joseph Smith made this shit up. So what? And it's like, well, but uh, so how are you a Mormon? I'm not following. But anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, he, he, I mean, I, I don't, I honestly, in the end of the day, I don't really give a fuck what people, what you believe. I could, I really could care less. It's, it's more about your actions. Like how do you behave with other humans? And he's a good guy, right? So he's like started like a foundation that helps people, uh, transition out of the church if that's what they want to do, you know, that kind of thing. And so like he has like a network of therapists that helps people so that, so it's, I, you can, you can believe whatever you want. I don't care. It's like what you're doing is good. So I'll support you. Uh, sounds like a great thing actually. Yeah. So I, I like him and we work together on some stuff and, um, but anyway, he's convinced me that, uh, I need to come out to Utah and he wants to have me actually, you're the first ones to hear this. I haven't even told my listeners about this, mm. but yeah, I think I'm coming in a, probably in a few months and he wants to do this big, like live recording. Cause he's, he's the main host of that Mormon stories podcast. And, um, okay. so he wants to have me on live and like do a thing and invite everybody. And he's like, I'll get an auditorium that'll seat hundreds. I'm like, Jesus. Okay, cool. Oh, shit. Wow, so yeah, man. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm. I think I'm finally gonna come to this alien planet. Yeah. Yeah. Now coming he, to Jordan. One, one one warning on on uh, Utah. If you're in Salt Lake, it is really not all that Mormon. It's the rest of Utah that is. That's what I heard. It's kind of like Austin of Texas, where yeah. it's a little bastion of awesomeness. Like the mayor of Salt Lake was very happy when the uh, same sex marriage ban was thrown out, and he was. Out giving out marriage licenses and officiating weddings. Yeah, cool. it, it is Austin because Austin super cool, but the University of Texas is there. Bruh, that yeah. happened. They Salt have that Lake. Stain. Salt Lake. You get five miles out of town, and it's yeah. creepy, creepy town. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm absolutely insulting all of your Longhorns listeners. If that's for the record, because <laughs> I graduated from the University of Oklahoma, and we're like. To get a degree, you have to like raise your right hand and say that you will hate the Longhorns for life. So that's a thing we have to do. <laughs> it's one of those weird. It's just oh, weird thing. God. So you I know. have a cousin that's in that's still in Oklahoma and basically won't leave, it, even though she's fairly a decent person. How in the fuck <laughs> do you get a person to leave from that state? <laughs> uh, oh, I, you'd have to give me more backstory. But no, I oh, wouldn't. Yeah, it was at uh, Oklahoma is interesting. It's the same though, right? Like, you know, cause I live in Oklahoma city as cities are cities. Like that said, it's, it's not that it's Salt Lake city. It's, a, it's just a lot of people live there. Once you get enough people in a place, then, you know, liberalism wins, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it's when you have small confined areas and small little groups that you can control the message. You, you cannot control the thoughts of millions. It just doesn't work in a confined space, you know? So the fact that Salt Lake City is the Mecca equivalent, or I guess they would call it the Zion, is what they keep mm -hmm. referring to it in the Book of Mormon, <laughs> right? It, it does. It's like I'm sure it was at one point, but then enough people move there, and it's like, mm, sorry, you lost your grip, and so now it's like when you want to find like the crazy Mormons, you're right. You have to go to the smaller towns in the outskirts of Utah because Salt Lake just got too big. You yeah. just can't get that many humans yeah. in one place and expect that one dogma is going to win. It just doesn't work. But it's still weird. <laughs> uh, well, rural America is weird, right? I mean, I, I, seriously, I've uh, my uh, my parents now live in what I call Pennsylvania, and I didn't come up with that term. That's just <laughs> they live in rural Pennsylvania. Basically, the entire area of Pennsylvania between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia is Pennsylvania. It is so hick. And, and yeah, it's that same kind of like, it's when you, when I go there, it, it does seem like I'm in a different place, like a whole different country. It's just so different than, you know, everyone just 
thinks different, talks different. It's like everyone has a gun and it's okay. And they just shoot things and think it's funny. And it's like, oh, did your Billy got shot? Oh, yeah, his cousin got him by mistake. Ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, how is that ha, ha, ha? That's not a ha, ha. That's a what the fuck moment, you know? <laughs> it's just great. Like the, the town my parents live in has a city ordinance that you, you it is illegal to put a uh, fake animal in your law or on your property. So like literally you can be fined for putting Santa Claus with reindeer on your roof because people will fucking shoot at those deer. Like they are that dumb. They just, wow. uh, something that so, looks like an animal, shoot it. <laughs> so the Santa Claus is okay, but the reindeer is too far. Yeah. Reindeer is crossing the line. All right. Have you no decency, sir? Right. Get the reindeer off your roof. What are you trying to do? Try, this, is a fam- this is a family town. The reindeer. Pink off your flamingos. Roof. Oh, no. Come on. Huh? A flamingo? <laughs> That's a rare animal. My goodness. That would be... People would bring out their AKs for that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's nuts. Uh. Uh, flamingo in Pennsylvania? I want that. I want to mount that on my wall. Shoot it. Oh, it was plastic. <laughs> Fucking plastic. God damn it. Yeah. They'd probably still mount it. They'd mount the plastic flamingo they shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, from behind, I'm guessing. The more uh, the more people you get in a congregated place, the more normal people get. Because yeah, small small areas, just crazy shit, just survives. Yeah. Well, on that note, we are uh, running out of time. My goodness, we haven't really talked about anything except that, for that, nonsense. That's what makes the show pretty fun. All right. Well, I hope that was fun. Yeah, I thought it was fun. No, yeah. I laughed my ass off. We covered a lot. So, yes, you can find the show at mybookofmormonpodcast.com. And believe it or not, the show is family-friendly, does not have an explicit rating. I keep it clean somehow. It's a challenge, but I've done it for uh, 76 episodes now. You know? So, anyway, so that's where, that's where you go. And you can do all this stuff. It's a got Facebook page and the Twitter and just pretty much my Book of Mormon. Just search for that. Google will help you. Although I do compete. You know, there is a whole church called that has a Book of Mormon and there's a musical and all that. But uh, it, it, it's up there. If you Google my Book of Mormon, it's probably in the top five. So I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. Nice. Good bad. job. I don't know. Try it right now. What is it? What is it? Because you never know on your own computer because Google no, like chose you. So I, it's like for me, it's number one. But I don't know. All right. Let's see. Oh, this is exciting. So it's coming up first. It'll be funny if you're like, it's, it's a third fucking page, dude. I don't know. Uh, the suggestions are, yeah, the top suggestion is study guide. Mm. And then podcast, quiet book, storybook, and ABCs. <laughs> so I'm saying. Uh, for yeah. me, just typing in my book of Mormon, uh, my book of Mormon podcast.com comes up. Then yeah, that's Mormon stories.org with you. So I was, so you're I had one number one. Two. I'm number one. You're number, me, number one, well. two, and then three is your fucking Boom. Facebook page. Four is your drop, iTunes. Drop the mic. And then your Patreon. Bam. So, yeah, Patreon. And then your religiosophy. There you go. Forget it. Twitter. That's all I got to do. And you know what, guys? You're going to be proud to know mm-hmm. I have a tradition uh-uh. that on my Book Mormon Podcast.com website, there's a little link that says David's Guest Appearances. You I saw that. that. Top right there. You, you will now be the uh, latest entry. Holy shit. Well, once you release it, yeah, I'm awesome. going to give it to you until it comes out. But you'll be there. Cool. Forever immortalized. The atheist nomads. Yeah. Episode, what did you say, 91? Yep. Got it. All right. How I'll put I? a link. I'll put a link to the show. And all the mimers can come find it. And they'll be like, if you just want to hear me babbling with two dudes about stuff, what are we talking about? Anyway, whatever. A whole bunch of shit. Yeah. A whole bunch of shit. <laughs> you, your podcast. The Mormon Church, weird place. Grown up in fucking Latvia, uh, Russia. You were, you were, you almost said it right. It was Latvia because that's the thing now. Good. Yeah, I remember <laughs> Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia were the three breakaway republics. Well done, sir. You are Thank correct. You. And I think you know, Putin's got his eye on him. I think he might take him back. Well, they're we'll NATO see. now, so yeah. Okay, and you actually think that all NATO countries are going to go with Russia if they take Latvia? Well, N- the See, mm. Ukraine isn't a NATO member, so they don't no. have to. But if he invades uh, Latvia as a NATO member per the NATO rules. Yeah, Article 5, go on. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. would be the same <laughs> yeah. legally as invading uh-huh. New York City. 
or sure. London. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so you actually think that all of those countries will go to unconditional war against Russia? I if don't think Latvia. It, I don't think he'll touch Latvia. The stupidest thing that the West has ever done was continued to grow NATO after yeah. the Soviet Union fell. Why we did that, I I, don't, I just don't know. Like, why it still exists, I don't know. But I, why I agree 100%. And then we put it on their border. Like, oh, we have an organization. What's your organization? Ah, it's pretty much to keep you down. Yeah. That's that's its mission, is to keep you fucked. And uh, yeah, we've, uh, good news, it's spread. Now it's on your border. That's a thing. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> oh, oh. And then uh, Ukraine elected a, a democratic election you know they uh got themselves a new president it's great he happened to be pro uh pro russia which because the people voted for that and yeah we helped get him ousted and put a nice little puppet regime in its place and they came into the eastern ukraine sort of killing people on the street this is great and then russia came and helped and we're all just shocked how could putin do this it's like what the what we think was going to happen? Uh, whatever. Russia terrifies me, by the way. As I just, I just, oh, yeah. I, I, I do not understand why everyone just looks at them and laughs. It's like, do you know this whole Cold War? There was a reason that we mm-hmm. feared for our lives for decades. They are still that. You got thousands of nukes and uh, terrorists, or uh, just fucking mafia people that can get their hands on them. Ma- Russia could take all of the Baltics back in a day. Like they couldn't, they could just, it, it would be an afterthought. It, they're so small. You just walk in be like, you're ours now. And if you, and those, the thing is those countries know that, that we're not going to do anything. They, they know that the, all. They could take them in a day and have Ukraine done by the end of the week before we could even get anybody there. And we wouldn't put anyone there. Yeah. We're not going to war with <laughs> Russia. It's not going to happen. And they know it. Like, it's like, oh, my God, we signed this NATO thing. And now it's pretty much worth as much. It's We can wipe our ass with it. That's what this paper is worth. <laughs> and they know it. And they're freaking the fuck out, which is they should be. Yeah, anyway. And, and That's and assuming like, oh. that Putin is stupid enough to risk mutually assured destruction because – U.S. and Russia never fought directly because of of the nukes. Okay, so he won't nuke them. He'll just go take them. He's going to go take them. <laughs> well, we're going we to nuke them. We're going to launch nukes. No, we're not going to do a fucking thing. We're going to we're going to stand up and be like, we condemn this, and the UN should have a joint resolution to say, bad Putin, that, that we won't do anything. Hey, take him whenever he wants. Yeah, the UN can't do a resolution because. Russia can oh, veto that's it. right. Russia will veto it. Oh, yeah. you want to you want to say that we were bad to take the Baltics back? Mm, okay, that's nice. Veto, bitch. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's absurd. I, I do not understand. And and but then we hear about oh, ISIS did that. It's like you know that's that's interesting and it's sad that ISIS is doing its thing, but it's not in the world stage. Nothing compared to what's happening in Russia. And I just it's you yeah. have to look for that news. You have to legitimately look for it. ISIS doesn't risk World War Three. No, no, yeah. We could we could probably go another hour about this. And I would actually say you're you're very optimistic in thinking that NATO is meaningless. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'm saying that the Baltic countries oh. are a meaningless entry in NATO. Oh, okay. Because if Russia wanted to take them. Like, like if Russia invaded Germany, that's a different story. Like, come on, but. If Russia decided that we want Lithuania now, no one would do anything other than like pump up their muscles and say, how could you? But we wouldn't do it. We're not going to war with Russia over Lithuania. It's just not happening. And if Russia decides, hey, you know what? That Baltic Sea kind of would like a port there. Although they kind of have one in St. Petersburg. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Like They could just do it. it just, it's what they did in Ukraine. It's exactly the same thing. They went to Ukraine. We're like, well, now how could you? And they're like, yeah, fuck off. And they just did it. <laughs> and they're like, uh, Crimea is ours now. So now we have the Black Sea. Any any questions? Yeah. Oh, you're all mad about that? Aw. Aw. I'm sorry you're mad. It'll be okay. <laughs> but we're Russia. Fuck off. Yeah. Anyway. I, I'm not that optimistic. I, I do worry that, that that Article 5 would be honored and... I'm terrified that it would, would be honored. We would have World War III. All right. Well, we are officially out of time. David, thank you very much for joining us. Sorry we went geopolitical at the end, but you brought it up, I think. Uh, Who doesn't enjoy geopolitical rambling? 
Fucking A. Dude, you're pretty fucking Listeners, awesome. Listeners, fear Russia. Look into it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Do a refresher on duck and cover. Stop worrying about this nonsense in the Middle East. That doesn't matter. But duck and cover matters. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads. <laughs> A little fear mongering there for all the listeners. <laughs> 50 style. Nice. Well, let's see if this one would fly. What if I asked you guys, what's yeah. the best thing about fucking 28 year olds? There's 20 of them. Oh, well done. You're my kind of guys. I'm going to yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess we start recording. Yep. This is gold. Right. This podcast gold. We're letting it pass. <laughs>